Welcome to the OutSystem CSS Best Practices lesson. In this lesson, we'll cover the topics listed here, including how to work with style sheets and OutSystems, Silk UI code conventions, and CSS best practices. In OutSystems, CSS style sheets can be defined at the theme, block, or screen level. Most CSS code should end up inside your theme. In Service Studio, the theme can be found in the Interface tab under the Themes folder. Each theme contains a style sheet that can be found and accessed in the style sheet property. As with other pieces of code, front end developers should also follow conventions and best practices while developing CSS, particularly when developing a theme. This should be done not only to ensure clean and organized code, but also to ensure the efficiency of the code being written. Having a well defined set of CSS code conventions beforehand leads to a more consistent result regardless of which developer actually wrote the CSS code. The Silk UI framework also has a set of conventions defined that can serve as a basis for your applications or project. These conventions cover basic aspects such as formatting code to more specific conventions such as keeping the z-index values as low as possible. Style sheets can end up being hundreds of lines of code. Therefore, organizing your CSS code from the start will help later on. Here are some guidelines to follow. Create a simple index with a few sections so that it's easy to maintain. Then, group your style definitions in those sections that are marked by a special comment, possibly containing a marker such as a dollar symbol with a number. Here, the dollar symbol is just an example. You may or may not want to follow this, but using something similar will make it easier to search through your long list of style definitions. Adding extra comments, such as color codes, can also be helpful in the case that you have to search for them later on. OutSystems has a small set of comments that are used to define some of the colors in your application. For example, whenever you change your application color in Service Studio, a replacement will occur in the CSS code. All occurrences of the primary color will be updated to the newly selected color. Also, the Silk UI theme customizer uses these special comments to proceed in a similar fashion, making it easier for you to test new colors in your application. CSS vendor prefixes, also sometimes known as CSS browser prefixes, are a way for the browser vendors to add support for the new CSS features before these features are fully supported in all of the browsers. We have here an example related to the flex property in which we need to mention the prefix for each browser. As you can see here, this gets pretty complicated because we have to repeat the property to get it to work in all browsers. However, when browsers start to fully support a particular feature, you only need to write the standardized version. In other words, you don't need the vendor prefix. Although there may no longer be a need to use vendor prefixes on some properties, in some cases, developers might keep using them, and this makes the code more difficult to read and maintain. Keep a close balance regarding which vendor prefixes are required and which ones are not. The ones that are not required should be eliminated. To learn more about the use of unnecessary vendor prefixes, you can go to the shouldiprefix.com or caniuse.com websites to research and find out if a feature requires a prefix or not. In CSS, different selectors have different performance outcomes. Therefore, it's important to be aware of which ones are faster than the others, especially when using them together. In this example, at the top we have a social A definition. And since the browsers apply the rules from right to left, first the browser will look for matches with A, which will result in three matches. Only then, the browser will look at those matches and filter out the ones not containing a parent with the social style. On the bottom example, when matching with the social link, the browser will only match with two elements and then look at which ones have the social style in a parent element, which would be both in this case. In this example, changing our CSS definition from social, social link, to only social link would improve the performance since we would avoid the descendant selector. In the end, you should give preference to selectors such as class or type instead of using slower ones like universal or attribute. When writing CSS definitions, be sure to keep them as simple as possible and avoid duplicate definitions. The more complex your CSS is, the more complex it will be for the browser to apply it. 
so reducing the number of classes or duplicates can also help improve the performance. In OutSystems, the IDs of the HTML elements are automatically generated by the platform. These automatically generated IDs depend on the hierarchy of the elements. For instance, in the figure displayed, we're highlighting the ID generated for the bottom bar item and its child. Notice that the ID prefix of the child highlighted corresponds to the ID of the parent element. As a result, developers do not have control of the IDs that are generated, and therefore ID selectors should not be used while a theme style sheet is being defined. The important rule in CSS, although useful in some situations, should be used with care. In most scenarios, you shouldn't have a need to use it unless you want, for instance, to make sure that developers will not override a style property by accident. In this type of scenario, a developer that wants to really override a property will have to explicitly also use an override. Animations in a screen can take your application to the next level. However, it's important to make sure that animations are as performant and efficient as possible. Typically, JavaScript animations run on the CPU, which may cause a direct impact on the performance of your application. When using CSS3 animations, the browser's rendering engine will be able to optimize the animation much more by using techniques such as frame skipping. Browsers optimize animations for performance and efficiency. For instance, Animations in an inactive tab get a reduced update frequency in order to prevent wasted resources, therefore leaving more resources available for other tasks. Even under a moderate system load, CSS animations should run very well. OutSystems developers can define and write CSS code in either themes, blocks, or screens. Having the CSS code scattered around multiple places can impact the long-term maintainability of your application. As a best practice, CSS should be centralized in the theme, thus having a single place where all of the code exists. CSS defined in the theme will end up generating a corresponding CSS file. For each block containing CSS, another CSS file is generated, and the same goes for the screens. By having all the CSS centralized in the theme, you also reduce the number of files needed to be loaded by the browser, therefore reducing the loading time of your web page. By default, the OutSystems platform automatically escapes expressions to make them HTML compatible. However, developers can explicitly disable this, for instance to inject HTML or JavaScript code directly into the screen HTML. This feature can be useful in some specific scenarios or situations, but on the other hand, it makes the application code a little bit more difficult to maintain. Sending emails in OutSystems can be easily done. However, it's important to note that emails are like self-contained HTML pages. Therefore, all CSS and JavaScript will be added in line to the email HTML source. When the same theme is used for both screens and emails, the email source HTML code can become quite large and contain several unnecessary style definitions such as the menu. A good approach to shrink the email HTML code size is to create a cut down version of the application theme containing only the essentials or create a more simplistic style. This will result in a smaller email making it even faster for devices such as smartphones to load. Frequently, there's a need to display icons in our applications. Icon font is just like a typical font in that it's just a table of characters and each character is a vector shape. As a best practice, we recommend the usage of icon fonts. With an icon font, we can simply replace these vector shapes representing characters with any other shape. Using this method, we can easily display icons as we display text in HTML. Also, we only need one HTTP request to load the icons, which is very useful for tuning our application performance. In the past, using CSS image sprites was a common developer practice. However, this creates a dependency on the design team to create the sprite, and then you have to use it as a background and define the icon with background size and background position CSS properties. An icon font can solve all of these problems. It's easier to create, use, and maintain, and its method is supported by all major browsers. On this slide, you can find links to some of the more commonly used font icon sets.